clicking sounds, sounds that reveal the presence of radioactive rays. The instrument, a Geiger counter, is converting radioactivity into sounds we can hear. This radioactivity is coming from a small piece of radioactive material inside this plastic cylinder. The small amount of radioactivity coming from the cylinder is harmless. The luminous dial on this watch also gives off radioactive rays, which we hear on the Geiger counter. Even when there's no radioactive material near, the Geiger counter continues to click. This is caused by cosmic radiation that continually bombards us from outer space. But we don't get enough cosmic radiation to harm us. Today, atomic scientists produce radioactivity in large amounts. Radioactivity and radioactive materials have many peacetime uses. But we know too that they can be used harmfully as in atomic bombs. The chance of your being hurt by an atomic bomb is slight. But since there is a chance, you must know how to protect yourself. To protect yourself, you have to know what the bomb does. Besides blast, there's radioactivity and heat. Can we protect ourselves from these? These children are protected. Concrete walls help stop radioactivity. Any wall stops the heat. The heat scorches the house, but does not harm the children. Any solid gives some protection. The thicker it is, the better. We have the national defenses to intercept an enemy, and we all form a team to help each other through emergencies. You are on that team. So is your family, each member of it. And in your community, every doctor, fireman, every policeman, and nurse, every lineman and operator, every civil defense worker, in fact, every community employee is ready to help you if you need him. So your community is prepared for emergencies and ready to help other communities. We have state and national headquarters for civil defense. And your city has a civil defense corps. We have a warning system and a system of defense. Yes, we have the equipment and the people for an effective team. But, like any team, it can win only when everyone knows his job and does it well. What is your job? What if a warning siren sounds? What should you do? Look for cover, the nearest cover. Don't try to make it home unless home is the nearest place to go. Don't hesitate, find cover. Everyone is in on this. Strangers will understand. Finding shelter quickly may save your life. If you can't get into a house, get behind a wall or a steep embankment on the side away from the city. Civil defense teams will go into action immediately. If you're home, you've work to do. Hi, Susie. Everything's fine upstairs. How are you doing here? Okay, I guess. That's good. We repeat, cover windows to protect against the possibility of broken glass, heat, and radioactivity. Turn off fires. If you are home and are not assigned to civil defense duties, go to your prepared shelter. Those who are in shopping centers, go to prepared well, shelters the immediately. Out. Now we'll go down the basement. In this practice alert, we are assuming that the attack will come on the waterfront area. See, it's just practice. All this rushing around for nothing. Now there's just where you're wrong. We need this practice. Now come on, let's do our job. That's good thinking. We all need practice. Here's a clean, well-prepared shelter in the basement. Ted and Sue have a battery radio. And they have soda ash and stirrup pump fire extinguishers. They have other emergency supplies too. A flashlight, a well-equipped first aid kit, with plenty of bandages, tape and scissors. A Red Cross first aid book, a few cans of food, a good supply of water, blankets, and an electric lantern in reserve. You know, Susie, 
This stuff would come in handy on a camping trip. I'd a lot rather be on a camping trip. Say, what would we do if we didn't have a basement? At school, they told us we should be away from windows and behind double walls, you know, like an inside hall. Ted's right. If you live in an apartment house, you can't all go to the basement. Head for a shelter area. If none is marked for you, find cover away from windows and in a hallway if possible. Wait for the all clear. Be calm. If you're on the playground, run for shelter. If you're in the schoolyard, get into the building. Move quickly, but in good order. Inside, go to the shelter area you've been assigned. Take your place on the floor. Here's one good way to protect your eyes and neck in case of a bombing. Wait for the all clear. So far, you've been watching a practice drill. But what if there is a bombing, a bombing that comes without warning? What is your job then? Find cover immediately. Don't look at the flash. Stretch out. In about one minute, the immediate danger is past. Then head for safer cover. Another bomb may fall. Get indoors if you can. Shed your outer garments. They may have radioactive particles on them. If you're home, take shelter and stay down for about one minute. By then, the danger from radioactivity, heat and blast have passed. Protect your eyes and neck. Let's get things shut up. Sue found shelter under her bed. Dead. Let's get the battery set. When the house current is off, that battery radio is essential. Keep tuned in. The airburst of 3.01 p.m. was zeroed on Union Station. Heavy damage extends from about 14th Street North to as far south as the waterfront. <laughs> You know, we're lucky. To West that blast was miles Stay here. undercover unless you have civil defense to... I've just been handed a bulletin. There's been an underwater burst at the waterfront. Water thrown up by the bomb is falling as mist and rain, and it is radioactive. Avoid this radioactive mist and what rain. What does he mean by radioactive mist? The According to what the Dad said, the radioactivity gets into the mist and rain. And if the mist or rain gets on you, it's apt to make you very sick. What would you do about it? I'd scrub thoroughly with a detergent and water. What's a detergent? It's something like Mom uses when she washes dishes and clothes. Don't drink tap water. It may be contaminated. Ted and Sue are waiting for the all clear. I'll see who it is. Hello, who's there? It's your block warden, Mr. Carlson. Come on in, Mr. Carlson. Hello, Ted. Hello. Ted, this is Mr. Franklin, our radiological monitor. He's here to check for any radioactivity. I saw your mother down the shopping center. She's fine. Well, there's no damage here. No, it's been very good here. Hello, Sue. Say, have you seen my dad lately? He's down at headquarters, and boy, he's really busy. Yeah? Well, there's no radioactivity here. Say, Mr. Franklin, is that a pen on your coat there? Oh, no, that's a dosimeter. A dosimeter? What's a dosimeter? Well, it measures the amount of uh, radioactivity that I've been exposed to. But this is the meter that I used to check with. Say, Mr. Carlson, is there anything I can do outside to help? No, Ted, everything is under control. You just stay here till the all-clear signal is given. You've done a good job. Thank you, Mr. Carlson. Bye, Sue. Bye. A good job. That's what everyone must do to be safe. Doing a good job means simply following the rules in an alert or an attack and waiting until all is clear again. In this early and troubled stage of the atomic age, our very lives may depend on always being alert.